Welcome to Jackal Dia One Tech. I recently got a comment asking me about the motherboard inside this PC, which is the Asus Prime B450M-A2 and what the BIOS version was. In my case, if I go all the way down, show all the BIOS version that came installed was this one, version 4202 from last of July 23 and in my response I said that I don't need to update the BIOS because everything works fine. That was true until yesterday I was watching some Plex and the PC just randomly turned off and today when I wanted to record I am recording now and the microphone is working, but it's only working in the front I.O. It's not working in the back. I have tested this extensively. This one, which is interior panel, would just not work. But previously it was. So what I'll do is simply update the BIOS to the latest version which is 4622 and it just came out 5 days ago and I will also download the audio drivers which should be under the drive and tools so in this case I have downloaded the audio driver which was this one the first thing that I'll do is update the BIOS. So what you need is a USB stick. It has to be formatted to FAT32. If that is not the case you can simply right click format at least in Windows, select the file system and click start. Now this stick is already prepared so what I need to do is go to the zip file for the BIOS I will copy this into the USB stick. Now the instructions for the motherboard, at least in this case. So what you have to do is when you download or update the BIOS, you have to rename it to this name. So I'll copy it and how you rename it is with this exe file. Well, I guess I don't need to do it manually. So any file that is besides the exe file will get renamed to this file. So that's okay and I don't think I need this one anymore so I will delete it off of the USB stick. So this is the only thing that will be on the USB stick. And let's see for the instructions. So first you have to go into the BIOS and it can be used in the easy mode or the advanced mode. And let's see, what do they say? Ensure to load the BIOS default settings to ensure system compatibility and stability. So select the optimize defaults item under the exit menu or press hotkey. So you don't need to load the optimized defaults if you want this to be successful. So I think that's it. I'll now restore the PC so the OBS will be stopped. So let's restart the PC and make sure that you have a compatible keyboard so you can actually get into the BIOS. I had some issues with Bluetooth only keyboards not being able to go into the BIOS. In this case I have to press delete or the F2 key. I'm now inside and what they said was to load optimized defaults. Is it just under the save and exit? Let's see. It is not. So advanced mode. Exit. Load optimized defaults. And before I do, I'll just take a look if I have any presets saved. Though I'm not really sure if I made any changes to this system. So Asus user profile, yeah I did have two profiles so that's okay. I'll now load optimize defaults. 
and now I can go to the tools section now so you have to click on the name and now we can use the Asus Easy Flash 3 utility and we have three options and the only one that actually makes any sense is the first one and it also has this name so I think I can just click on the name you want to read this file? yes do you really want to update the BIOS? yes I do and also when you do this make sure that the PC has the power otherwise you can break the motherboard although this one also has the BIOS flashback button in the back so even if that happens you do have a way of getting the motherboard to work now what I want to see if this will fix is the occasional crash with Plex that I had which in this case I believe I only had it happen three times and that was in a span of like eight nine months so that is why I actually forgot that I do have some issues with this PC as for the audio if the BIOS doesn't fix it I hope that the drivers will and as you can see this process is quite slow the mouse is not responding so I'll just let this do its thing as for all of the stuff that you see on the desk this will be content in future videos this will be some Arduino basics I'm not going to go full deep dive because it's basic to me but what you will be able to do is obviously do the basic flashing the LED but we will also connect this to an app on a mobile phone but you can connect this via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and you have basic Android apps and with the app you can control the LED or something else but what I will also show you how to do is change the value of an say LED inside the app based on the actual value of the LED that you have here that will be one then in this one what do I have connected it controls this motor which is a stepper motor and the other one is to use either two buttons like this one this is a button for the mouse so it's a tiny button you can use two of these at least with the camera that I have which is which is Panasonic Lumix G80 or G85 and what this will do is one button will focus the shutter and the other one will actually take the picture and the point of this will be to make everything remote so this will simply plug into the camera other cameras have infrared sensors this one does not so this is the approach that I have to do let's see if I'm too late I'm not okay so I have to reset the fans uh, we detected the new FTPM firmware no I did not apply any FTPM function so why hopefully that will work but I want to go into the BIOS because the fans reload as hack I need to set the profile back uh, so let's see what is bugging it please enter setup to recover BIOS settings I guess I have to do something else so I have to go to the user profile and now I don't have any profiles awesome I should have saved the profiles to the USB that sucks so I have to go to the monitor do the QFAN configuration and the chassis fan configuration so this will be PWM and did I have this set to custom manual so I think I had this set to manual I think it was something like that and I'll do the same for the CPU so for some reason it does not want to go into Windows maybe if I take out the USB that will help I guess that helped so now I will quickly test audio as you can see the front one is working it has a line now how about this one 
Maybe it's not picking up anything. So nope. The audio is still bust. So what I will do now is install this audio driver. Which I may need to first extract. As for the version, it's 609-7001. So it needs to be restarted. Okay. Now hopefully there will be no issue with the audio. So let's see the volume mixer. Do we have any luck? <coughs> No luck at all, at least not with this lapel microphone that previously worked without a flaw. So I guess you win some, you lose some. I'll see what else I can try to do to get the audio back up and running on the back port, but at least it's working in the front. And I will also let you know if I have any more crashes when using the Plex. As for what kind of crash it happened, well, we can type in event, not event, event. So event viewer, you go to Windows logs, system, and this happened yesterday. It was this one. System has rebooted without cleanly shutting down. Basically, the PC shut off. The fan spun up and then the PC turned on again. Basically like it was reset. Uh -huh. And also something about TPM. So maybe TPM is the issue with AMD. I honestly have no idea. Now that's it for this video. If you want to see some of the electronics shenanigans that I have going on here. I also do have some electric clock that I didn't get up and running just yet but I do have at least three projects maybe four just on this table. So if you want to learn something about Arduinos and what you can do with it I'll see you in the following videos. Thank <laughs> you.